Mr. Hebert, Acquire Power, Mr. Jean. Mr. Hebert, seconded by Mr. Jean, moves that Bill C-377, an act to amend the Income Tax Act requirements set for labor organizations, be now read a third time and do pass. Is it the pleasure of the House to adopt the motion? All those in favor of the motion will please say yay. All those opposed will please say nay. In my opinion, the yeas have it. All those in favor of the motion, fifth row on my right, please rise. Mr. Hebert. Mr. Hebert. Cherry Agar for Ezra Levant. That was the scene last night as Bill C-377 passed. It would require, still has to go to the Senate, unions to open their books in the same manner as charities and nonprofits. The bill's sponsor from BC MP Russ Hebert joins me now. Welcome, sir. Well, glad to be here, Jerry. All right. So uh, the thumbnail version, um, was I correct in how I introduced it? Absolutely, yes. It extends the principle of public disclosure to a group of institutions that receive substantial benefits, namely labor organizations. Uh, taxpayers forgo about $500 million a year in tax revenue because of the generous tax treatment that we provide as a country to these institutions. And like charities, I believe it's now time that they provide some accountability and transparency um, like most of our G8 partners, frankly. We could go into that, but I'll, I'll stop there. Okay, well, um, let's take a moment here and listen to what NDP leader Thomas Mulcair had to say. It is so manifestly, so obviously illegal, contrary to the Charter. This is the Russ Heber government. Yeah, I mean, it's, yes. it's, it's patently illegal. So it'll take a while for it to wend its way through the courts. It'll be expensive. It'll be time-consuming but it'll eventually be thrown out by the courts. What they're trying to do is send a message, a coded message to their reform party base. This is what we would love to do, but we're being held back. So they haven't even presented it as government legislation because the bill has been shown, shown to be comically flawed. So, Mr. Hebert, uh, patently offensive, comically flawed, obviously illegal. How do you respond to all of that? Well, people use those kind of remarks flippantly all the time. It's easy to say something that's uh, is non-constitutional, but the reality is in drafting this legislation, I consulted broadly, including with constitutional experts. Uh, but more than that, uh, this bill would not even have reached the floor of the House of Commons uh, had it not been deemed constitutional by a subcommittee of the Procedure and House Affairs Committee, on which, by the way, sit some constitutional experts that teach constitutional law at universities in, uh, in this country. But more than that, because the government supported the bill, uh, the Justice Department has deemed it uh, const uh, charter compliant. And that was confirmed last night when the Attorney General stood and certified its constitutionality when he voted for it. All right. Um, well, I mean, we've seen these bills pass in the United States some years ago. We'll talk about that uh, again in a moment. But our law is not radically different. And I also wonder what Thomas Mulcair is talking about when these same rules apply to nonprofits and charities in Canada. Exactly. I mean... We've, had, we've required charities to disclose since 1977. This is simply an amendment to the Income Tax Act that, that applies the same principle that currently applies to charities to another institution, namely labor organizations. So I, don't, I have no idea what uh, Mr. Mulcair is referring to. And I, frankly, I think it's just uh, what you say when, when you've lost a vote and you have nothing else to do. You know, I heard from somebody this morning when I was talking about this on the radio who said that he's a union member and he's okay with this because he doesn't mind more transparency, but he was worried that now um, all of his personal salary information, et cetera, was going to be up on the Internet for everybody to see. So last night there was a number of votes, and in included in those votes were votes on amendments that made changes to the bill that addressed that particular concern. Because I had heard that for some time and I was trying to be responsive to stakeholders. So any disclosure of pension or benefit related uh, information, any addresses, all of that information has been taken out of the bill. That will not be happening. Uh, salaries of secretaries will no longer be disclosed. It's simply going to be those making $100,000 more uh, and above or um, those in positions of authority. We've, the amendments also reduce the cost of compliance. So we've uh, required electronic filing 
and also uh, taken out the need for cross-referencing in the database. And that's reduced the cost to government substantially. So the kinds of things that would be released would be where the money's going in the political world. Exactly. So at this point, I mean, going forward, it, it's been amended such that the ordinary operations of a union no longer have to be disclosed. That's simply going to be one big aggregate number. But where a labor organization is involved in lobbying or political activities, and those uh, costs exceed $5,000 in a given year, that will have to be disclosed. Well, I guess it's fair to ask the question, what are union leaders and Thomas Mulcair afraid of, that there's a big hookup between those two entities? You know, that's a great question because Canadian labor organizations have had to disclose, at least those affiliated with U.S. labor organizations, have had to disclose to the U.S. Department of Labor, and it's all on their website, since 1957. You know, so you can look up the United Steelworkers of Canada and you can see the salaries for their employees, the time they spend on political activities, their transactions over $5,000. And so all this legislation does, frankly, is it, is it extends that same transparency to the rest of labor organizations in Canada. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, Australia, United Kingdom, Germany, France, our largest trading partners, all have public disclosure of labor information and, and transactions. So it, it's about time that Canada had that same opportunity and that taxpayers, frankly, who are footing the bill to a tune of $500 million a year, uh, see where this information, what this information is, is all about and that their money is being well spent. So it passed last night, now it's off to the Senate. What do you expect there? Well, we have a sponsor in uh, Senator Nicole Eaton who's going to carry the ball from this point forward in the Senate and uh, she's very eager to get it started as quickly as possible and our hope is that sometime in uh, 2013 it'll finish that process and receive royal assent in time for the first filings to occur in 2014 so that Canadians can have a look at them uh, before they go to the polls next in 2015. Mr. Hebert, thanks very much. You're very welcome.